Hello and welcome. In today's session, we'll take a look at uh, SAP HANA. We'll look at a little bit of the background. What is HANA? What does it consist of? What does it stand for? And then look into a real HANA system and the HANA Studio. So what is HANA? What does it stand for, if at all, for anything? HANA started with uh, uh, being an abbreviation, an acronym for High Performance Analytic Appliance. Uh, uh, but soon as it evolved, HANA is no longer an acronym, it's just HANA. Um, primarily when customers buy HANA, they get these three components, the database, the studio and the information composer. However, on a bigger scale, the whole HANA suite consists of some other elements as well, which we will go through in detail in the subsequent slides. So HANA database includes SQL and MDX interface, includes things like relational stores, uh, persistent areas, calculation engines, etc. HANA Studio is used for administration and modeling and provides one consistent administration and monitoring tool for all components. Information Composer allows the end users to model different kind of data mashups, different kinds of scenarios, etc. Also to note is that HANA 1.0, which is the current release, does not deliver any content uh, equivalent to BI content as in uh, out-of-the-box reporting and out-of-the-box uh, functionality. Um, it does not give you an ABAP data dictionary and it does not give you any front-end tools except MS Excel and um, to an extent business objects. So these are the uh, components of the whole um, HANA software group. You have the HANA database which refers to the database technology itself. Then you have the HANA Studio which refers to the suite of tools provided by SAP for modeling. HANA Appliance refers to HANA database as delivered on partner certified hardware as an application or an appliance. HANA Application Cloud refers to the cloud-based infrastructure for delivery of applications, typically existing SAP applications rewritten to run on HANA. HANA database takes advantage of the low cost of the RAM uh, and data processing abilities of multi-core processors. It offers a multi-engine query processing environment which allows it to support both relational data uh, with both row and column oriented physical representations as well as graph and text processing for semi-structured and unstructured data management. An important thing while working with HANA is to understand the difference and the applications of column based storage versus row based storage. So this on the right hand is a row based storage whereas this on the left hand is column based storage. The row store is optimized for concurrent write and read operations. It keeps all index structures in memory rather than persisting them on disk. It uses a technology that is optimized for concurrency and scalability in multi-core systems. Compared to this, the column store here is optimized for performance of read operations. Column oriented data is stored in a highly compressed format in order to improve the efficiency of memory resource usage and to speed up the data transfer. The column store offers significant advantages in terms of data compression. Typically, user and application data is stored in a column-oriented format in order to benefit from the high compression rate and the highly optimized access for selection and aggregation queries. 
And now we look at the um, HANA Studio. Uh, instead of showing you in a slide, we will look into the system directly. So now we'll be logging on to the HANA Studio uh, application. So I double click on this one. It's logging me in. And this is what the application looks like. This is my admin console. I do not have any views or perspectives open. And on my right side, we've got these cheat sheets, which are essentially a step-by-step -step help. So if I want to know how to add a new system, I get my step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. Now HANA Studio is a Java based application that runs on the Eclipse platform. When you start the HANA Studio for the first time, you can decide on several perspectives which are essentially views. So if I go to Windows, open perspective and this is the list of views and I can choose uh, one of these or more of these as default you can have multiple views on this screen the modeler perspective is used by data architects to create reporting models the admin console is used by the administrators to administer and monitor the engine and the modeler view we'll just see what the views are the modeler views is not shown here but if I press others I can see a whole host of views the modeler views is essentially used by BI architects so on my left is the navigator view and this is the system I'm logged in if I expand this this is the catalog the physical tables are located in the navigation tree under the default catalog node and when we expand this node we get a list of all the schemas that are available so if I go to the schema D money these are my tables my synonyms my procedures etc that I've created for this schema and if I look at the tables and double click on one of them I get this view and these details for my table so if I click on my first table for example I get a different view so so I can see and model all my tables over here next we go to the system view over here the system monitor now this shows me the list of all the systems that are currently connected to the HANA Studio. Currently there's only one system DCB and it's showing me various details for this system. So the log disk, the data disk, trace disk etc. My alerts, operational state and the icons here give me a chance to actually configure the viewer. So if I do not want to see the operational state, system ID is mandatory. So I apply. And my operational state which was here is it, it disappeared. We've had a quick look at the HANA Studio and now let's see how that information is actually consumed. One of the ways to consume it is using Business Object Explorer. So we'll just have a quick look at the Business Object Explorer. I need to change my URL to the correct server instance which is 02 and now the system is going to ask me for my user ID and password and this is the screen I see 
and these are the various reports that I can actually access so uh, we created the D money schema let's have a quick look at the report and this is the kind of look and feel I get I also have the option of doing my Excel reporting out of this by inputting an Excel sheet directly here so if I go to my home page scroll down and I can browse for my Excel sheet which I want to display as a business objects report so I hope you enjoyed this session and hopefully we'll see you again soon